A minister in the presidency responsible for women, youth and people with disabilities, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, has urged teachers to push more girls to take up STEM subjects to be able to partic participate in the maritime sector. Chikunga delivered a keynote address at the annual Maritime Stakeholder Dialogue at the Nelson Mandela University in Gabeja in the Eastern Cape. This event, organised by the South African International Maritime Institute, calls for the transformation and empowerment of women towards inclusive economic growth in the sector. The minister joins us now live in studio. Minister Shikunga, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for having us, Mpo, and good evening to your viewers. The maritime sector remains a very male-dominated industry. And you've made this big call for teachers to encourage girls to take up STEM subjects. What structural barriers are you hoping to overcome as you make this call? First of all, if you go to secondary schools, girls are performing, in fact, are outperforming boys when it comes to STEM subjects, but it's not many of them. And when they go to tertiary institutions, they are not channels towards choosing STEM related careers. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, when you look at the girls that graduate in, in the STEM sector, they are only 13%. And if you look at women who take up jobs that are STEM related, they're 23%. Mm. In a country where women are 51% plus. So that actually tell you that there is a problem somewhere. And that is why we have said, even when one was still at transport, we have said it's important that first we channel girls to choose STEM subjects. But also in South Africa, we said, we can even have maritime subjects at high school yeah. level so that when they then go to university or any tertiary institution, they can then choose maritime related careers. And that actually can actually help us to have more skills in that sector. And that's, that's a great call. Uh, as you make it, in fact, uh, um, as you talk about the possibility, my next question was really along the lines of some of the concrete policies or funded programs that your department is implementing to make this possible, especially as we look at the impact of not being able to head in this direction in under-resourced schools and, and, and families who cannot even afford to even take their children to any tertiary institution. In fact, I think first we need to acknowledge the fact that South Africa is a maritime state. And if indeed we are a maritime state, we've got then to have maritime skills so that we are able to pursue that dream of a South Africa that is a maritime state, that is a port state, that is supposed to be a flag state as well, owning vessels that are flying South Africa's, I mean, flags. Mm -hmm. And as such, if you want to pursue anything related to ocean's economy, broadly speaking, Definitely you need STEM subjects because you do need maritime engineers, you do need maritime pilots, you do need maritime technical people. So all of these, they require STEM subjects. Of course, others might necessarily not require STEM subjects if you want to be a maritime lawyer, for instance, but you still want to be a maritime related doctor, for instance, and all those, they do require some STEM subjects. So if indeed we want to do that, then of course you've got to identify the STEM subjects, subjects as important for oceans economy in South Africa. But remember, we also are talking about economy. So it means you also require maritime economists. You also require CAs that have measured in maritime. So it's, it's, it's a field of itself that is too broad. And that is why if you look at what constitute maritime for in, in oceans economy, for instance, you'll be talking about maritime transport and manufacturing, which will actually bring in departments in government, for instance, such as Department of Transport, but of course, trade and industry, and everything that must happen in our ports, whether it is to maintain our ports or to build new infrastructure in our ports, you need that. But you also have issues such as aquaculture, anything that lives in our waters. And, and, and you need people that have the understanding. You definitely in the maritime, you also, what you have underneath in, the, in, in South Africa, you also have in our waters, like for instance, oil and gas. 
at some stage we were saying we will have to drill 20 wells. Mm. We managed to drill three yeah. wells. Melissa, let me ask you this, just for the sake of time. I mean, as this dialogue took place, um, how would you now respond to, to the criticism that will come with it? That, you know, it's all very well to, you know, um, have these events, talk about what's needed, but then it all boils down to implementation. You, you got me excited when you said, you know, you, you were even having the discussion of having maritime subjects in high school, but that hasn't happened. And it the has. gap is still glaring. It has. It has happened. Okay, happened. which schools has it effect. You'll find them in KZN and around Deben. They were established, schools for maritime. Yes. The Sayimi itself, that is in... No, no, yeah, okay, I, I understand that. I was, yes. I was more referring to having it national, that maritime is indeed a subject in high school. Should I want to choose my eight or ten subjects, that maritime can be one of them if I'm a young girl who's performing well in the subjects and have that opportunity. When is that going to happen? It hasn't happened definitely, yeah. but we did establish schools that are maritime, that, that are meant for maritime only, yes. particularly around the coast, because for them, they still have to go to see some of these things. So, so because that's maritime, it's about ocean, etc. So we did establish such schools. Yeah. But they're not enough, for sure. Uh, you don't find them in the inland provinces, for instance. And I think it's possible to, to add more of those. They are teachers because they were sent to World Maritime University in Sweden to go and study on how to teach maritime. Mm -hmm. And they were brought back. That was done at the expense of government. For instance, Tita was paying for that. Mm -hmm. So there are teachers that can actually teach maritime subjects. But of course, like we are saying, many of them, they still require STEM subjects. And, and, and at some stage, there was a program where if you have studied um, Mer, 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 in fact, what is this engine? What is this mechanical engineering? Yes. You could then convert it to maritime engineering. It only needed you to to just do that over a period of about fourteen months. Then you'd be both a, a mechanical engineer and a maritime engineer. Mm. As our students were doing that, they were getting actually absorbed by the shipping companies because that person will be bringing two mm. uh, skills, mechanical and, and in maritime. Minister, before we let you go, I mean, we're running out of time. You, you talk about the importance of pushing girls and teachers yes. to ensure this is a possibility. Where are the loopholes um, as you speak about how many of them are not taking these subjects, although there is potential, where are the loopholes and, and what is your department going to do to work with the basic education so that those loopholes are indeed bridged? They're discouraged. Girls, young girls are discouraged from taking the STEM subjects. Difficult. But of course the very key economy that we're talking about, it's this girl who's got a brother who is ill at home, a mother who is ill, who must take care of the mother and therefore cannot choose meds because it actually demands more time. So she will go for the easier subjects, even if she could actually manage maths, science or whatever, mm -hmm. they will still go for the easier subjects because there is this care economy, this care that she must provide at home that is never recognized when things are happening and everything is put mm -hmm. on the table. So there's quite a lot. But of course, the, 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 the culture, you know, people believe that no, but you, you what can't. What do we do to change that? Of course, it, it actually says we have got to go to our basic education and say if a, chi a girl child can manage and is performing, channel her to choose these um, the STEM subjects. When they go to tertiary institutions, tertiary institutions must give girl, girl child the opportunity to be an engineer, to be a doctor, yep. to be etc. They are not. They, they, they channel them to humanities like those are the subjects that normally would have been for women anyway. So that past is still lingering on us yeah. and therefore channeling the girl child mm. to, those, to those careers that are seen to be nursing, for instance, vis-a-vis mm. -vis doctors. Okay. I, mean, I mean, medicine, for instance, okay. not be a nurse and not a, a doctor, etc., etc. Okay. Minister, thank you so much. Thanks for coming in studio to talk to us. We do appreciate your time. Uh, of course, uh, wrapping that discussion up with the uh, Minister and the Presidency responsible for women, youth and people with disabilities, Cindy See where Chikunga.